So my name is Carmen and I, I am a Caribbean artist from the Dominican Republic. And uh, yeah, I came here when I was about 19, 20 years old to live in uh, Brooklyn, New York uh, with my mother who immigrated here before me, right when I was a baby. And I was raised by my grandparents. Um, I saw my mom uh, maybe once every two years because she was working all the time. Um, and it's one of those immigrant stories where you grow, grow up sort of motherless and fatherless and you grow up with people around you. I grew up in a very small town um, and uh, never thought to be an artist, never occurred to me that I could be one, um, not because uh, I was prohibited from it from family, but because I just didn't know it existed really in, in as part of, of my life. Um, I decided to speak about fear today because I have a fear of public speaking. And I am some, someone who can talk and talk forever. And I've been a faculty and I can speak to many students and I can speak about art all of the time. So I've been thinking so much about why is it that when I'm confronted with my own work, I shut down. So um, instead of just talking about my work in that sense, because I started to get nervous. Um, I sort of want to have a more cathartic experience in understanding why this fear comes from, this inability to talk about this work that I make. Um, and I think it comes from uh, several places, but I think one of the most important places so that I can't like think of is that I'm, I'm really well, well versed in speaking about art and high art, right? I, I, that's what I learned in school. I, I was so, so happy and enamored to uh, be part of this group of people called artists that I saw sort of like fell into by accident mainly. Um, and that's what I studied, right? So I always says like, you know, my mama is Bernini and my daddy is, I don't know, Caravaggio or something. And these are great work of arts and these are great artists, you know? And God knows that the Metropolitan Museum of Art changed my life. But I did grow up as an artist with 2,000 years of um, patriarchal male, white male history. So that I can talk about. Uh, I can talk about some few women artists that I learned later about or you know, later in my life about that I can talk about. I can speak about that. I can speak about that very well. But when it comes to speaking about my own work, it's, it's a, such a personal uh, to me story, and I don't mean that other artists do not come from it from a personal perspective, but for me, I think it comes from a very private per perspective. Uh, I think for me, uh, this is a very lonely profession. Uh, I don't surround myself with many people. I, and it's been, it's very, I don't plan things. I am more of a performance artist when it comes to making a lot of work, even when it's not me in the work. My work, it is autobiographical, even when I'm not in the picture. And almost all of the time, with the exception of so much of this work, um, I am not in the picture, except for some pieces here. Um, but it does come from a, a place of, of my own self. And then 
I have to put that in the context, in this art historical context that didn't exist for me. So I lack the language, and I realize that. I lack the language to describe this in terms of an artistic medium with that academic language that I know how to use and I don't know how to express because I've never was part of that picture. And both because language barrier, I mean, I was 20 years old when I came here, so I had to learn English. I moved in into the projects in Brooklyn, so that was um, a hard thing to navigate as an immigrant again. And I had to get to know my mother which I didn't know. So the, the immigration experience for me has also been an, a, a, a place in where this, a, there has been a fragmentation in my life in the place of belonging, both in the artistic scenario, right, as an artist, but both as, and as a woman, and as an immigrant woman, and as a woman of color. Um, and understanding where I fit within that idea of being also an American artist, right? So I go to Dominican Republic and I have a home there, um, or just uh, just had to get rid of my home there because my, my grandfather died, uh, which is a very sad thing for me. But uh, uh, but uh, that's you know I'm not a visitor there. That's you know some people say you know oh, are you gonna visit? to the Dominican Republic and like, you know, kind of going home. And well, this is home also in a sense for me, except that I am not grounded. Like my feet are not planted in the earth or the dirt or I don't know how to explain it. So a lot of this work I think describes the experience of being unseen um, and uh, I started doing this particular work during COVID, and I, I'm not going to talk about them specifically, but I'll, I will talk about them as a group of things and how I, I did make them. Um, I think that the first thing I want to talk about, because I think it's what started my whole narrative, is that boat piece in the, in the back. Um, and the piece next to it, the shiny, shiny floating little piece. Uh, the boat, the boat in the back, it's it's a it's a it's simple uh, sort of a, it's a jola, it's called in Spanish, and it's sort of like a wooden raft raft that they make, and it's used to the Dominicans used to immigrate, you know, they go in the boat, they immigrate from a river that's actually behind the house where I lived. And they immigrate that way to go to Puerto Rico. And from there, they go to the US mainland. But it so happened that boats this do sink. <laughs> and this particular boat sink all the time um, on a daily basis. And I, I am from the Caribbean part of the island. So I'm very exposed to this. This particular one was in the newspaper. It was a small newspaper clipping that I kept. Um, and I, I don't know, I kept it maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 years. I don't know how long. And uh, I, I took it out and, and I started just, I, I never worked with archives before or pictures that were not the pictures I took. Um, and I decided to figure out what that meant for me. and. Uh, I created that image and I, I saw myself in it because it's always self-portraiture for me, which is a little silhouette, little picture of me. And the, the, yellow, the yellow decorative uh, things are, are the ironwork that existed in my house. Uh, and the colors, uh, represented that, and, and it is sort of like that experience of going from one place to the other place, and where that divide, what, what, how it divided you, and how you hold on to 
that part of you, which is why the iron work repeats in the little figure, and you try to hold on to something solid. And I, how objects carry meaning, and how those meanings are embedded into our a history that you then invent and you create. Because I believe that the, the immigrant has a hybrid story to tell. It's not, and we're related not by bloodline, but by this idea of how do we fit and the objects that we carry with us and how meaningful that is. And um, I started to think about immigration at large. And I had these pictures of uh, African-American women, uh, other women of color, color and I, um, I had those also for a very long time. And during COVID, I, they were like, they are hanging out. And I um, just started working with them. And they were all uh, unidentified, uh, unknown uh, women, circa 1912, uh, public domain from the Library of Congress. Tiny little, you know, snippets of who, who knows who took the picture, why the picture was there, but it was part of a collection for people to take and do whatever they needed to do, study it. Um, so I have hundreds of those. And I decided I wanted to sort of have these women known. I wanted to, I wanted people to see them undeniably there, not a little face, not uh, black and white. No, I wanted them to be present and big and known. And I started making this series over here of uh, unidentified uh, women. Um, and this is where they, they came from and they came from very small, small little uh, fragments of photographs that I have found. Um, and then I started working also with my own personal archives. Um, I think during COVID, I, I started, I, I was working in two series at the same time, but I, I think I was, I felt a little lonely, but I also felt like I like the privacy of that moment of having not to be so uh, overwhelmed by the outside world. And that kind of made me think about this sense of uh, how these ghosts almost were speaking to me, but they were alive and they wanted to be present. So, um, I then started doing this also, this work at the same time, which um, they're collages, and they have a, 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 a collage history that starts like a collage within a collage within a collage. So I would take the, the picture, and I will make a very simple photocopy uh, just from the copy machine, and then I will take those, and I will float them in fabrics, gold, pigments, uh, anything, sand, paint, uh, whatever I found, I would float it on the on water. And because water became this kind of really important thing for me in terms of the narrative of how we get here to America. Uh, and I would look at them, and they were so beautiful, but then I would just, just stop and throw them out. And I kept doing that, and I kept doing that, and and to me it was enough just to see sort of like the passage of time within a picture that was of a picture of this person, and um, I then rephotograph these things as they, as they were moving, and then I made a print, and then I thought, but this is not enough because I want this to be undeniably like one of a kind. I wanna make this just one of a kind thing that I cannot repeat. 
because I, 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 I already went to this space of repeatable change and this, this transformation and transformation and change. And that's when I decided to make these um, collages that I couldn't, that I couldn't repeat again um, or addition. And, um, and that was my intention with these. Some of these are self-portraits like the one with the pearls. Um, and, and this one over here um, is a self-portrait that I have uh, a print with a silk, silk boat, where a lot of boats, and on silk, and I just dripped it on my face and very simply just took a breath and took a picture. And then I put the gold, gold leaf behind it and all that, that but that's where the, the picture came from. This is one of my own photographs, but these were also found. I want them, I wanted them to be beautiful. And I, I love color, I love composition. Like I said, I, I learned, uh, I learned how to make, I, I learned how to make art. Uh, but I didn't know how to, what that meant for me in terms of how to translate it to my own idea of uh, art making. And I wanted them to be, uh, that to have a sense of beauty in them, a sense of, um, um, to, to call, have color and life, and to look like the places I remember growing up, and to have a sense of luxury, almost as shininess, you know. So, um, so this is why this, this is how this work was made, and that this is how it was born. Uh, I work both quickly uh, when I'm doing things and then slowly after they are kind of being born. Um, but it's all for me a very um, sort of ephemeral experience that I try to capture um, into a still image in this, in this case. So um, to swallow a river to me is this ongoing thing of uh, how we have this great wave of immigration. We all live here in borough land and um, <coughs> And for me, um, thinking about America, I'm thinking about being an American and choosing, I, I made a choice to um, become an American citizen. I didn't have to be, but I, I made a choice to do that. And, and what that meant for me it, in terms of what I was giving up and why I was giving that up. Uh, and I, I started to think about that uh, and I started to think about Americans in general. And I also started to think about that divide of white America and black and brown America and how black and brown America tried to hold on to whatever they can, you know. And I felt that, uh, you know, in the white American experience, people get globalized into like one assimilated culture. Uh, the immigration experience of white American gets lost, unfortunately, um, in terms of time. And, um, and I wanted to figure out how, how these things intersect. Um, I, I was also thinking about uh, when I was looking at these pictures of African-American women, of course, I have to think about enslaved women and invisibility. And, and then new ways in which I think the intersections of new ways of uh, enslavement within the immigrant community that come into this country and how those things intersect. And I always think about water when it comes to that. 
and I, I'm not particularly a smart person when it comes to art making in terms of having a smart idea. It's just really started by me floating those pictures in water. And then I uh, went back home and I can't swim. And I'm from <laughs> the island. But, you know, I don't know, there's the fear of water that I have. And, and it could be because of immigration, of because, because people left from, they were so close to me and there's still people waiting for those to left to come home and all of that fear of water. But I decided, you know, I was floating and I was floating in this water and it became so expansive and, and then everything came together for me through water. And, and it's this kind of like grave wave of immigration in which we all exist. And I'm, I really make work to find uh, a place in where we can all, or all of us can converse, converse about that and find a place of common ground between everyone. Um, and try to see how can we speak about race and identity, the loss of identity, the, what happens, what do we lose, what do we gain, how do we find, uh, if we can find, or how do we find the ability to understand that, to talk, to speak about privilege, to speak about speak about privilege without speaking about guilt, but just speaking about what that means, um, and remembering um, everyone on on immigration experience in this in this land. Um, it's it's probably one of the topics, and I mean, I I definitely. Uh, can say for certainty that my work is about race, immigration, and womanhood, and identity. Um, I only photograph women. I, and it's not intentional. I, I just happened to have looked up my past work since I was a kid in school, and it's never changed. It's always been portraits of women, all, all kinds of women. Um, and um, this is the story of this work. This is a little bit of my story. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I have a question, because I know of your artwork. Um, why did you, there's a photograph of you with the man, with the flag of the, Ameri the American flag. I'm just wondering why you decided to photograph a male. Where? Um, there is a photograph of uh, you holding the flag. Oh, is it, but it's not here. No, it's not here. Okay, so we can't speak about that. Um, okay. <laughs> I just, um, also, I was just wondering the significance of the flowers within your work. Uh, well, I mean, uh, <laughs> I I love uh, I love I I love beauty I love beauty I I think I love work I I I'm, I'm, I guess seduced by things that are beautiful are tropical and, and warm. I think they're inviting. Um, I think they're non-threatening in a way, you know? Um, and I also feel there's like, I, I want this, I want these wonderful people, which I consider wonderful people, friends, now, to, uh, to emerge from a place of like beauty and nature and color.
when you're around these women, do you imagine a story for them, or what's your relationship with the pictures? Um, they have become. I don't imagine a story for them because I can't. What attracted me specifically to some of these is that this it was the gaze. This was not a weak, uh, meh, you know, enslaved person. This is a strong, beautiful, confronting, image that you can't deny. It. Um, and and it, it was very impactful for me that although they are unknown or unidentified, they were so they were so present. They were so there and they want to be so known and they were so proud. And, um, and that's really the, the relationship. I, I wanted to present a different gaze to the public rather than a gaze of something that I didn't completely understand because I wasn't there. Um, and that was, it's not part of my, my history, really. It's part of a history that I learned that I can um, commune with, you know, in terms of my own um, experience, but, um, but that I'm still trying to understand as choosing to be an American. Because, you know, I mean, I come home and, I mean, my family, it's, it, my mom is a black woman, <laughs> like this. So for me, it's like, it's, it's such a familiar, it's such a familiar thing. You know, I go home and I'm the, I'm the white person there. You know, I, when I'm with my brothers, I'm the white person there because we all look so different in my family. Um, so I, I just, I, I tended to uh, have a, a feel that and like I have other work that like this that have pictures of my mom and the, it's that gaze of like determination of um, being present. Uh, I think that that's how I, um, I relate to, to this such, I don't know, there's a sense of compassion I feel too in, in, their, in, their, in the gaze. Thank you so much. Yeah, they don't work. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah.
Right. So, uh, so the iron work was, you know, I don't know, we use iron work very decoratively, but it's also a pr protection barrier, you know, like iron work is used. Like for me, when I came to the US and I saw beautiful, particularly I'm from New York, right? It's beautiful iron work in New York City. And it was black. I just thought this is crazy. Like, how can you have these beautiful, beautiful, like, designs, and they're all blended into the background? I mean, my house was pink, you know? So uh, I, I thought it was crazy. So I, I, I would go home, and there, there was a sense, there is a sense of, like, pr protection with them, but there's also a sense of, like, beauty within that. So, so it's... So, the iron work for me was like this sort of like protective area or like this area of, also an area of staying back or like this can hurt you. Well, you cross to the blue and then you have none of that. You have just what's inside, this kind of hollow silhouette of inward you have this internal sort of like shell just to, to help you through, but it's, it's gone now. You work with young people as a professor, I take it, is that true? So I, I'm not a faculty anymore, I, I retired. Uh, Due to health, some health issues, mm -hmm. and no, I, I well, eighteen year old and older, so it's co co college students. Mm -hmm. have, have you have you thought about their role in determining their identity in the world when you were with them, or you know, as you were examining your own, uh, trying to figure figure their young adult out that type of thing for, for them. Well, I worked um, probably like 90, 98%, I would say, of the students. My, my student population was, um, was a white student population from almost the same city, like the same from Long Island, <laughs> uh, which is the population that we get at the university where, where I was at. So uh, I would say that it was, it was comfortable, it was comfortable for them to, to hear these stories or to speak about these stories, but it was comfortable only in the setting in which they were at, which was not an inner city, um, actually, like you have to deal with these issues of identity and your own identity. It was more of, tell me your story, I understand your story, uh, which is what happens usually in these cases. You know, I understand your story, tell me your story, but how can you be part of this story? It's a very difficult thing, I and mean, it is a very difficult thing to do with students. Um, because it's, you know, they don't want to be. It's so much easier to say, oh yeah, I really get it for you, right? But, I don't, and I, but I'm gonna go home and go to sleep. And I'm gonna sleep thinking I really understand it for that person, you know? And, and so, so, so that's what happens. And it happens a lot in academia. It's disappointing, but it does happen a lot in academia and where uh, you still, you still seen as the other. Happens a lot in art, you know. Uh, you still seen as the, okay. I get the work. The work is important. It should be talked about, seen. But it's always as the other, um, and it, it's isolating. Uh, academia was isolating for me in, in terms of being an academic and, and, and even with other faculty. So it was really hard as a faculty to have students, I mean, I have students that have never worked with 
faculty of color or a teacher of color there. Um, so to, to bring that into that equation was kind of self-serving, I, I, I thought. Uh, uh, they will ask questions and I will answer those questions, but it was always about that uh, sort of one-sided conversation. Right. This is the less uh, nervous I've ever been doing that stock, I have to tell you. Um, the last one I did, I was so nervous that my hair, you could see this hair shaking like this. And I, I think it's because I decided to say I'm scared first. Uh, and and I, I'm scared because I have been shut down and say shut up so much all the time today till today and I'm gonna be say shut up and tomorrow you know and and I've been shut up all through the beautiful work that I so admire and I so love I mean what am I going to say that's how, that is, you know, the 2,000 year of art history that I learned is what taught me what I know. And it's that divide that exists like in, within me, in, art, in, the, in life, but in the work that I make. So when I make the work so intimate, I don't even think about that when I'm making the work because it's like cooking, right? I'm just making my own food, but then the work is there, and then you have to see it, and I have to sit here, and people ask me, what is it about? And I'm thinking, well, just look at it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's not very abstract, um, but I also understand, you know, that there are certain issues that need to be explained. So. I don't know if that answered your question, but, um, but that's, that's how I, I don't know, that's the relationship that I, that I have with it, yeah. Yes? I, um, it sounds like your approach to artwork is so intuitive, and so it just comes to you naturally, and you love working with it. You talked a lot about like, that it's about the process. Yeah. Really lovely, and I'm curious if uh, you explain some of your process for the other mm -hmm. pieces. But I'm curious about these. Yes. You seem so tactile and hands-on. Yes. But these were images that were pulled from the Library of Congress. Yes. So you're working with like a digital content. Yes. So it's well. I'm curious about. Like, it's so interesting because I can't edition these either. Oh no. I <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. So, so yeah. So, so everything to me is very tactile. Like I, I have to touch everything. So these technically started as those little things, and then I had those little uh, photographs laser engraved into uh, acrylic, clear acrylic this big and I want to have all hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them done like this and do an entire wall and that was my idea but I couldn't afford to do that <laughs> so I had like 10 of them hanging out looking at me and I'm like what I'm going to do so I, I scanned them and they were just this clear thing and I kind of picked each sort of color and dropped each sort of color and then 
printed them and then reprinted on top of them. So it's, it, yeah, it is, my work, it is very tactile. I, I do, and it's, it's all process oriented. I go into, to make something and I go in it, like my body, and I go in it and it's wet and it's messy and it's cold and there's nothing, nothing comfortable about the way I, I work. Um, and, and it, nothing to do with content or context, not while I'm making it. I say, don't name the baby till it's born. <laughs> I know nothing about you. I'm just making these things and they're coming out of a place of uh, intuition, not a place of, of knowledge. Um, and, and to tell you the truth, I still don't understand the work com completely. Uh, I think this is the most I have understood this work because I, I'm looking at it, up, I'm, I'm seeing it up in these walls and you guys are asking me questions that are ma making me question myself. Um, but I, you know, I never know what I'm going to make. I also work in multiple series at the same time. So, I don't know, ADHD, <laughs> just, you know. Uh, yeah, so it, yeah, it's. I love getting to hear your connection between like um, how they can work in the digital realm and that maze and where they start. Like, yeah. you're, you're really bringing it all through your body and you're using your body as a big tool in the process of making that. Yeah. That's a really interesting way to, to think about how the content's flowing through you in multiple ways. Right. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Photography, I, I, you know, I'm nothing without a, a camera. Like, I'm nothing without a photograph, I always say, you know, like, I'm a, I'm a photographer, really. Uh, but, I, but I also love to paint and to draw, and to, I like, because I love mixed media. And I, I love digital media, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Um, you know, I am a big fan of it. But I, um, I always resisted the idea of, the thing that come out, like the thing that just comes out. And I don't know if it's like the sense of uniqueness that I'm trying to find all the time in the way that I make things. You know, um, I, I try to, I don't know. It's, uh, it's the way that I use digital media a lot. Anybody else? That's it. Well, thank you so much, you guys, for listening to me and being here and being so patient. <laughs>